Walk us through your emotional state, the months after getting fired and piecing together your plan to move forward. Oof. So starting up Respawn was, uh, you know, at a time when there was obviously a lot of turmoil going on. The interest we received after being fired from Activision was, you know, pretty outstanding. So it was kind of responding to all the publishers that were interested and in kind of talking to us and decided to, you know what, let's do it again. Let's, let's make another run of it. So in naming the company, we were kicking around ideas, uh, a lot of really terrible ones that I've blocked out of my memory. At some point, it just respawned, came up, and it was just an instant fit, like, yeah, that works really well. So in building the team here, you know, we obviously had a lot of interest from people we worked with previously, and, you know, that was both surprising and amazing and great. I just decided to come here, so uh, I decided to leave Infinity Ward. After uh, Jason and Vince had been fired, it was time to time for a change and things were changing there so I decided I would like to continue with something more closely resembling that culture that I'd gotten used to and so I thought this would be a good time to change over and come to Respawn. You know first thing was go out try to find some office space. The space that we're in now is where we first landed. We were squatting for a while while negotiating with uh, with the landlord so there might have been some broken glass and, <laughs> and dead cockroaches on the ground. We've since cleaned it up though it's a really nice office now trust me. I have loaded up my hatchback from Costco with like mini fridges and folding tables and stuff and you know it was just a bunch of guys who were sitting around for about a month with iPads and notebooks and a whiteboard you know hung up against a wall to just spitball ideas and I felt like everyone would come to work it didn't even feel like work it was like a bunch of friends coming and hanging out in someone's garage and like oh what are we gonna do we're gonna change the world the sky was the limit and it there was also a lot of uh, paralyzing fear with that because it's like well if we can do anything what do we do such a long time ago. My enduring memory is that initial spot of just sitting in a massive circle, the glass on the ground, and typing notes, and talking to people back and forth, but not really being able to do anything at the time. Doing a lot of waiting for tech, and that was tricky, so trying to design sort of in just one's mind, but not actually being able to see it or make it happen just yet. There was that long uphill climb there. That was, that was, that's a, that was a tough time. At first, we you know had to kick around ideas for you know what's a game going to be, what tech should we use, what you know what is everything. We kicked around so many insane ideas that it actually made us insane. Being in a brand new startup with a brand new intellectual, intellectual property, we just didn't know exactly what that meant. We were not dead set on a first-person shooter when we started. There was a lot of talk about doing all sorts of stuff, top-down, third-person, you know, a hack and slash or anything. You know, it was really a wide open field for us. I would say the choice to do another FPS was kind of, we're doing something new, we want you know the idea to be different, we want to do something new in kind of terms of gameplay and mechanics. Breaking farther beyond that and doing a racing game or something that we're not familiar with wasn't the smart thing to do. For us, you know, it's something that's in our wheelhouse that we can innovate on and do something new and, and see if we want to expand from there. So it's just kind of a, a natural choice. The thing that's daunting about it, of course, is that blank page phenomenon and the fact that we have this sort of history of having made these very successful titles. And now we have to start from scratch and rebuild. So I think coming into this, you know, there's a lot of people that have had a lot of previous successes with games. My big goal was let's not let that guide us. I mean, we're, what we want to do is make a game that is the most fun that we can make. You know, put together something that we're proud of, that we would play, and, and let that be the guide. Like, don't. Don't be handicapped by what you might have done or what you might, you know, be worried about failing or succeeding. Like, make something amazing and it will be a success. We weren't following some formula of, oh, research says you've got to have blue airplanes because games with blue airplanes sell really well. It was, I want to make a game that we don't want to play, you know, as when it, what's on the shelf, we want to pick it up and play it. So we had a fairly extensive period of experimentation and trying a lot of different ideas. And along the way, we said, OK, it's time to focus. It's time to narrow that stuff down, because we had gone in many, many different directions and tried many different things. And being sci-fi definitely helped pull those things together. You'd say, that is cool. We have to get that in the game somehow. So we're going to make it happen one way or another. Because we're sci-fi, there's ways we can sort of make that fit that we wouldn't be able to do in the real world. During that first, I'd say, six months, there was a lot of game ideas come up with and fleshed out in, in certain aspects that were definitely not sci-fi. They were modern era setting, maybe fiction based, but not, you know, not science fiction at all. It could have just as easily ended up being, these are giant creatures and you're riding a, a beast or something. It just happened to work, to work well with the mechanics that these be mechanical. And it just a natural fit for it was, it has a sci-fi element to it to explain these things, to really give them weight and purpose in the world.
So to be creatively in control of our intellectual property it just means a lot to us so we can kind of set the tone for what it is we're working on and why we do things is you know for the good of the product and for what the game players are going to see. Working with EA Partners gave us the ability to hold on to that IP. Would there be sacrifices? I mean, I guess possibly in, you know, it, it's not an IP that EA owns, so will they be more reluctant to put all their forces behind it? So far, they haven't shown that. They've been amazing. The reality is there is a lot of, there's a lot of up and down in the experience of making a game like this because it, it takes so little to like set things off balance and set things on some weird course and then having to steer that back onto course and so there's a sort of up and down so one day you're like yeah this is really good I can see it coming together and some days it's like uh oh. In starting up the company it's a different team it's different dynamics we lost some people along the way who just you know didn't fit in with what we were doing or the way we were doing things and you know Jason was one of them we've done some amazing things together in the past I have a ton of respect for for him, but you know, I think it was time for that to happen. I think we'll both grow professionally and, and personally because of it, and, and I wish him all the best. So we started the company with about 30, 35 people, and since then we've grown quite a bit. I think we're over 80 now. The process for finding new people for us is very difficult. We have very high standards, sometimes to a fault. Interviews are pretty rough. You know, we try and find people that seem like they can punch above their weight. It's really important that everyone here plays games, you know. Every interview we ask, you know, what games are you playing right now? What's your favorite game of all time? And why, you know, articulate your opinions about this because we're gonna ask you what you like and don't like about the game they're working on. We want everyone to be invested in what they're making. We don't want them to punch in and punch out. And we want them to be proud of what they're working on. The office is really about, you know, it's a place where people spend an enormous amount of time. So we try to make it a place that is both comfortable and fun, but allows people to still get as much work done as possible. So, you know, we have an area where people can just kind of lounge out and relax a little bit, kind of calm down from the stresses of, you know, trying to put this new thing together. We just put it in a motion capture system, so people are very excited about that. And you know, it's just that that team camaraderie. So whatever we can do to bring people together and and have an area where everyone can bond and discuss things and, and make the game a better thing. So now that we're at about 80, 85 people, we're nearing what we expect to be our max uh, headcount for this first game, and it's relatively small uh, compared to I think a lot of bigger game studios. I don't see us growing to be a mega company of 400 people. I don't know, we'll see what happens after this game. It's really been a process of relearning. You know, we're doing something completely new. We want to shake it up. We want to do something different. We want to do things differently.